So I'm starting a project that's going to require laminating steam vent slats into rings. Specifically, I'm going to try and make round bar stools, and to make sure they're structurally sound, laminating is the way to go, but with radiuses this tight, I need to steam bend the slats first. Trouble is, I don't know how to steam bend. I made the steam chamber out of an ABS plastic sewer pipe. I went with ABS over PVC because ABS, though more expensive, has a much higher melting point. The pipe comes in 10 foot sections, so I cut it in half because 5 foot long was perfect for my needs. I wanted whatever lumber that was being steamed to be able to have the steam go all the way around it, so I needed some sort of rack system. I wanted to put dowels directly through the pipe coming out on each side, so I made this little jig so I could try to drill the holes evenly. It worked okay, but if I did this over again, I probably wouldn't bother because this jig really wasn't necessary. I used wood dowels instead of metal because I didn't want to have anything that would be inside start rusting or corroding and then discolor wood. Now, like an idiot, I'm gluing an end cap on now, which was the wrong time to do it, and you'll see why later. I glued the dowels in just using some two-part epoxy, and after doing, I don't know, maybe 30 different steam tests, this so far they haven't failed at all. I did go back and cut the ends of the dowels a little shorter after everything had dried. So here's why I was so stupid that I glued the end cap on already. Right now I'm drilling a weep hole for the steam to come out and now I'm putting in the hole where the steam goes in and the thing I got was designed to be threaded in with a jam nut. Because I can't reach the jam nut now I had to heat up the thread so I could sort of just tap it in and then screw it that way. I'll say this did work but it would have been a lot better to be able to put it on with the jam nut. The other end of the tube is where the wood will go in to be steamed, so I needed to have a cap that was removable. So I got another end cap like this, it just won't get glued on. I made a simple little handle though, so it would be easier to get on and off. Lastly I added a hole for a thermometer to go in so I could see how hot the inside of the chamber got. This is just an old thermometer I used from my beer brewing days. So here you can see the full setup, and there's the hole where the steam goes in with that brass fitting which I added a little epoxy to. There's the little weep hole where all the uh, extra steam and condensation will come out, and it sits on these two little brackets. The lowest point of the tube is in the back, so everything will drip down, and the bracket in the front, being a little higher, will keep it at a somewhat of an angle. The cap just fits on with friction, and I found that when it was cold it would slide on and off pretty easily, but as the tube heated up it would swell a little bit and then make it harder to get it off. My steam generator was something made by Ehrlich. It cost about 75 bucks. It comes with the generator, the hose, and the fitting that you use to attach to your steam chamber. So far, I haven't had any complaints with it, though I do wish the reservoir was a little bit bigger. For my first test, I wasn't really sure what was going to happen, so I put this piece of plywood here in case the lid came flying off so it wouldn't hit anything. So here I got it up to temperature for the first time, and you can see all the steam coming out of that weep hole in the back. It was important to have a bucket there, and more on this later. So if you remember, the whole point of this was to make round wooden rings for the foot rails on bar stools. So to do that, I needed to make a 15 inch diameter form to bend the wood around. And I watched a few videos on how to make banjos and use something very similar to that to do this. Now, despite my very cursory YouTube research, there was still quite a bit of trial and error, and this jig went through a couple of different iterations. This entire project has been nothing but a learning curve. Anyway, I started by making the circular forms, and I just used some construction grade plywood for this. As an aside, you hear that right now? That clicking? That's the sound of a bandsaw blade that's about to break. Anyway, that's why you always have a spare. I'm not getting too in-depth in the process of making this circle. There's lots of different ways of doing it. This is just the way I find to be the easiest. I added these holes at this point now because I wanted to have something to be able to put clamps into while I'm holding whatever piece of wood gets bent around this eventually. I added this notch for the wood to start out in, so by the time I make a full traverse of the circumference, I can bend over the part that's already been started, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, you'll see more later. Once I had the first disc done that would serve as the template for the rest of it, I glued it onto another sheet of plywood. 
And after that, the process was basically repeated twice. Unfortunately, this was too wide to be able to do on my drill press, so I had to drill the axle hole by hand. With the wheel done, I made a simple base for it to attach to. I needed a rigid backing for the wood to be pulled against as it was bent around the circle, so I used this piece of roof flashing. Unfortunately, I managed to cut the entire thing without keeping it in the camera frame. I also took the time to file that jagged edge smooth so I wouldn't cut myself, and I didn't. This metal is like 18 or 20 gauge, so it's pretty thin. I folded one end over to double it up a little bit where the attachment hardware would go. Now, initially, I attached this strip to my uh, bending wheel with screws, and this proved to be kind of a dumb way to do it because I couldn't get them properly countersunk, which created little bulges, as you're going to see. So here's my first base. I added these feet to it and then I added this little stop block on the side because I thought that that would work and like I said, this whole thing's a journey and I'm learning as I go. I made a little washer out of some 2mm plywood just to keep the uh, wheel from being directly onto the base and then I attached it all up. Lastly, I added a handle that went right over the center of the hub and it really was longer than it needed to be. Later, I took off about six inches. So ideally, you steam bed to air dried lumber, but I only have kiln dried lumber, so I made a pre-soak bath with the other half of that pipe. For most of my ring tests, I was using between quarter inch and half inch thick pieces of wood, so soaking it between an hour and overnight didn't really seem to have any real difference. Here is the first piece that I'm going to bend. It's a piece of beech, and I left it in there for about three hours. So I filled up the reservoir on the steam generator and turned it on, and after about 20-25 minutes, I had a chamber full of good thick hot steam. So the board went in, and I left it in there for about 45 minutes, being my first test. Uh, as I came to find out, it, with these thinner pieces of wood, a half hour would have been fine. So you definitely want to wear gloves when you're doing this, though the wood does cool off pretty quickly. Here I'm using some welding gloves. They're massive overkill. They just happen to be what I have that's convenient and on hand. Anyway, I took the piece out, put it into my jig, and tried it out for the first time. So right away, I was able to see there were some design flaws in my plan. The end of the board in that notch that I had cut out was not uh, being held in place hardly at all, which created this giant bump, which inevitably caused a crack, as you're about to see. The stop block on the side was also too close, and my wood would not fit through there properly. So this crack aside, the piece of wood actually bent real easy. It did not take that much effort to spin it around this jig. So the next day I took that piece of wood off the jig and I put it onto this sort of keeper ring that I made so it could dry and firm up a little bit more while I redesigned the jig. So I needed to remake my base to make it a little bit bigger so I could move the stop block out a little bit further and have more clearance for the wood. I also wanted to make a smoother transition between the metal and the wood that would go over it so I notched it out a little bit and then attached that metal strip with roofing nails because then they would be more flush. So at this point my thought process was if I could attach that piece of metal a little bit better it would hold the end of the wood at that stop point in the jig better and it wouldn't bow up like in the first test. I don't really know what to call this thing it's kind of a stop block and kind of a tension block. So now, as you can see, we should have the needed clearance, maybe even a little bit too much, but this will be easy enough to adjust. 
I also modified my steam chamber by adding a tube coming out of it where the steam and condensation comes because in my tests my entire shop was getting very very steamy and being that it's like 50 degrees in there I don't want all the cast iron to rust. This worked really really good to recondense all that steam. You can hear that thing bubbling away. A little bit of weeping where the pegs go through. And it would look to me that this tube is bowed slightly with the heat. It seems to be holding up well. You can see where the temperature is. So here's my second bend and the stop block did work pretty well, though I redesigned it further, as you'll see. But still, that end of the board where it hits that stop going into the wheel did not hold tightly, and it created another bulge, and that continued to be a big problem until I figured out what to do about it. All right, so here's the next morning. And it's had a bit, bit of spring back, which was totally expected. I'm not worried about, but I've been thinking about how I can get it tighter in the initial bend and how to make it easier to do that. So I'm thinking is if I had a stop block on the metal strip, when that hits, it'll hold it. It'll hold this from going any further and allow me to really crank on the piece of wood inside and get it as nice and tight as possible for that initial bend. So that's what I'm gonna do, is add a stop block right here. So I don't know why, I just keep ignoring the problem of holding that strip there, but this stop block did help a lot and ended up being in my final design. Now you may have just noticed the knots that were in this particular piece of beach, so I never really expected that this bend was going to go well, I just mostly wanted to try out that stop block. And here you can see the end still popping up, creating that big bulge, but I thought by maybe pulling that metal strip tighter it would hold it down. It did not, and it broke on all those knots. So by now I had a bunch of partially bent pieces of wood and I thought well what if I could just kind of piece them together I'm gonna to laminate this anyway would I be able to make a full ring so that's what I tried to do and this proved to be extremely difficult so even after being steam bent the wood has a lot of spring back and trying to do this was extremely difficult this sequence took a lot longer than you'd think it was gappy it looks like crap and there was a lot of swearing i'll add that i know that ideally you would do this with some kind of catalyzed glue like with um, bent laminations but i was just using type bond because it was easy and i was never expecting this was going to be a final piece anyway so i got it off the form and as you can see it looks like complete garbage So I did some soul searching and this is what I came up with. I decreased the diameter of the ring so I would have less spring back when I went to glue and I made this little cleat that would hold the piece of wood really tightly while I was bending. I also redid how the metal was being held in because I was getting worried that it would crack with fatigue. And as you'll see, these modifications worked awesome. I went on to do a number of bends and tests on this using poplar, white oak, and beech and every one of them went really well with this redesigned jig. So because the wood does need a while, like a couple of days to really dry back out again and hold its shape, I made a number of these smaller discs that I could keep it bent around. And I also came up with this design for a strap clamp. Now I bought a pretty nice Bessie strap clamp and tried it out, but I just wasn't able to get enough tension. So I came up with this, making it out of that same sort of material that seat belts are made out of. And then I was able to use a nice clamp to really pull it tight. So this particular piece of wood is a little bulgy because it was an earlier test that I actually bent twice. But it was mainly to test out this clamp and then to see if now with more well bent pieces, I could properly laminate them together. Let's see if I can. 
the problem in trying to pull two pieces together like this is there was just still, there was too much friction between the two layers of wood. And the best I could do was still gappy. Now, I imagine maybe I didn't let these layers dry out enough. Uh, maybe with more industrial setup and strength, I could have gotten it tight, but I still had these gaps. And for what I wanted to do, make some really nice bar stools, this was not going to work. I mean, look at this. So even as bad as this is, I still wanted to test what my next steps would be should I ever get this entire process figured out. So I began by getting one edge nice and smooth with a joiner. And then I went to trim the other side of the table saw and realized this was not safe. I needed more of a fence to be able to put that up against. So I clamped this board on that I was able to hold the ring directly against. And this, though it may look sketchy, felt a lot better. You definitely want to have a saw with a riving knife. Anyway, with that bit of cleanup, it didn't really hide the fact that it was still super gappy and looks like garbage. So at this point, I'm like running out of scraps to bend, but I thought let's try and do two at once. So I did some quarter inch thick strips of white oak and I put them in there, no problems bending whatsoever. So my thought process was if I could just get that first ring really tight on the form, and then getting the second one on wouldn't be that hard. So I cut a notch out on my gluing form to put a piece of sacrificial wood on that I would attach the ring to, to be able to get it nice and tight. Since the ring is gonna get attached to this piece of wood, at least temporarily, this piece can't be part of the ring because I still have to be able to get this whole thing off the form. Since this was just a test, I wanted to go kind of quick and I nailed the piece on, but I think if I would actually explored this idea more and it has potential, I would glue it on and just be patient so I wouldn't have to deal with nails later. So with that first ring on there nice and tight, the second one went on a lot easier, but my strap clamp still just wasn't quite strong enough to really pull that wood in and completely close the gaps. As you can see, the third layer went on even better than the second one and I was largely getting rid of a lot of the gaps, but this was still just not good enough for what I'm trying to make. And for a couple other reasons, I decided it was time to move on. I modified my bar stool design, which is going to be part of a future video into more of a U shape. The U shape didn't require so complicated of a jig, and I was able to do three slats at once so they'd kind of nest within each other. I used a big cargo strap to pull everything tight instead of messing around with that piece of metal from the other jig. So as an idea, this is three quarters of an inch thick in three separate little pieces, and I was able to pull it tight just with my arms. The first time I tried this, I didn't let these pieces of wood dry out as much as I should have, and I ended up with a failed glue up. For the real bar stools, I'm probably going to go with a pre-cat urea based glue, so it dries a lot harder and firmer, but for my tests I was just using Type Bond 3, mainly due to its longer open time. In all my testing previous to this, trying to glue together the curved rings, I found that the more clamps the better, which is why I used every single 6 inch clamp I had. One thing I ran into that's really hard to see on film is that these slats had curled a little bit due to all the moisture involved in the steam process. To combat that, I made these little feet for all my clamps so it would put the pressure at the outside where the edges were curling up and have the most even amount of pressure. When the glue had dried, I took it all out of the jig and cleaned it up on the joiner and the table saw much like I did the ring, and this time I had a good successful lamination with no gaps. The lines you see between the slats are pretty evident because the Type Bond 3 is a lot darker than the poplar wood that this is made out of, but the real thing is going to be made out of walnut, so that won't be an issue. So, so far in this uh, kind of getting long video, I had only been bending smaller thin pieces of wood half inch or less, and I thought it'd be fun to see what would happen if I tried something much thicker. So here's a piece of three quarter inch white oak. Now I touched briefly on it earlier that it's important to have pieces of wood that don't have any knots in them, but here is an example of why it's really important to have nice straight grained wood. So I'm gonna go with, that was not straight enough grain to bend without splitting and having some sort of backing probably was necessary. Oh well, it's just worth a try. So 
So since this is the last bend of this video, I figured I'd go for broke. That first piece was three quarters of an inch thick. This one is seven eighths. The wood is white oak. It's fairly straight grained. I soaked it overnight and I steamed it for about 90 minutes. I did get some splitting right along the outside, and I think that has to do with partially the grain, but mostly the piece was just too thick to be bent on this kind of radius. I left it on the form over the weekend, and on Monday I took the piece off and had remarkably little spring back. I kind of wish I had tried with a piece that was only three quarters of an inch thick because it might have come out perfect. As you can see, that outer surface just pulled apart because there wasn't enough material to make it around that bend. Anyway, I know this has been long and it's a journey, so thanks for watching it with me. Here's a picture of my cat.